we all have been dealing with a lot since the pandemic has started. Indian healthcare workers are trying their best to control the situation. National Institute of Disaster Management encourages you to take the preventive measures against the coronavirus. Always wear a mask and sanitize your hands frequently. Also follow all the protocols of social distancing. Get yourself vaccinated from your nearest vaccination center. Until then, stay home and stay safe. Uh, namaskar and good morning. Welcome to the final day of this three-day online training program on telecommunication, radio, and social media in disaster management, jointly organized by National Institute of Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, and Department of Telecommunication, Ministry of Telecommunication. So myself, Raju Thapa, I'm the YP GMR Division NIDM, and I will be the moderator of today's session. The role of the media in disaster management has improved significantly in recent years by using new technology and introducing the knowledge of technical experts who are able to better describe the cause and consequences of disaster. The fact that technology has made possible things such as remote television transmission or satellite communication has led to a, prolif a proliferation of information and the report of humanitarian event whenever and wherever they occur. Not only the technology has allowed the media to cover a wider number of disaster, but also to re reach a greater amount of people and the way in which the media portrays, portray image and describe the real scenario is crucial to determine the level of response. Communication is an important disaster prevention and management. Many channels are used before and during a disaster, such as uh, visible or audio uh, audible signals, leaflets, uh, announcement by speakers, cars, and public events. Important channels are the mass media, newspaper, television, radio, and increasingly important, the internet. Mass media has certain characteristics that make them advantages for disaster communication, as they provide easy access to large public, and some of them constitute a robust communication system, which remains working even in case of partial breakdown of the infrastructure. Recent natural and man-made disaster as a main cause for certain uh, to the global community. In times of crisis and emergency, radio can be a lifeline for people in uh, shattered society or uh, those who are caught up in uh, catastrophe or, uh, or in desperate seeking news, radio bring life-saving information. So um, today's date, that is 6th November, also holds its importance as on this very date in the year 1900, I.L. Anderson, the American professor and the orator who is considered as the pioneer in the field of radio broadcasting was born. In today's technical session, we will be graced by the presence of distinguished speaker, namely Sri Sri Pal Mina, ADG, Disaster Management, Department of Telecommunication, Ministry of Telecommunication, Dr. Sandeep Borwa, Scientist Dev, Vigyan Prasad, and Professor uh, Surya Prakash, Head, GMR Division, NITM, who will be sharing their vast knowledge and experience with us. Some important announcement like attendance will be counted only on Cisco WebEx platform. And this is there is no uh, separate attendance sheet. Your attendance is automatically recorded in Cisco WebEx event. Feedback link will be distributed towards the end of the today's session. And one more uh, important announcement that uh, it's my duty also to, to give the awareness about coronavirus prevention. Wear your mask properly, wash your hand, you know, with soap and water regularly, avoid touching eyes, nose, and mouth, keep social distancing, and clean surface regularly. Please do remember that no carelessness until there is a cure. Jab tak dawai nahi, tab tak dhilai nahi. Let us all fight together against this global pandemic. So to start our technical session, uh, in order to monitor the quarantine people, the local government agencies are using various tech-based solutions like GPS-enabled monitoring app or risk bands or CCTV surveillance, uh, even drone and monitoring through uh, like drone cameras and AI-based uh, like facial recognition system. 
Several mobile applications in India are being developed for checking not only the location in, of the quarantine people, but also for checking whether they are breaching the quarantine or not. In India, Department of Telecommunication has also taken some great initiative. And to talk in more details, we have with us Sri Sripal Mina, ADG Disaster Management, Department of Telecommunication, Ministry of Telecommunication. I am very humbled and uh, to request Sri Sripal Mina Ji to take on the stage and grace the occasion with his lecture. Over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. I hope the screen is visible. Yes, sir. It is visible, sir. So, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is enjoying the uh, training program. In continuation, I shall present. Uh, I shall give a brief presentation on the COVID-19 Southern platform. I said, Sri Tina, uh, ADG Disaster Management Department of Telecommunication. So. Uh, in this presentation, we will briefly introduce about the CAP protocol, that is common alerting protocol, because uh, this protocol is of COVID-19 Southern Platform. Then we will uh, see the basic details and uh, schematic of COVID-19 Southern Platform and the, in this uh, corona pandemic of this COVID-19 Southern Platform. So, first of all, what is CAP? Uh, CAP is abbreviated as Common Alerting Protocol. It is a extensible markup language based protocol uh, used for warning messages simultaneously over multiple mediums such as uh, telecom networks in terms of SMS broadcasting over TV, radio and uh, highway signage and social media in terms of Twitter and Facebook. Happy, so uh, common alerting protocol is designed for all hazard, all communication mediums. It increases the effectiveness of the task of activating warning messages for uh, responsible per officials such as first responders and other decision making authorities. Uh, CAP was introduced by uh, OASIS that is Organization for Advancement of Structured Information Standards in 2004. That is a non-profit organization. Uh, OASIS updated version of CAP 1.1 actually adapted by Industry Communication Union as uh, recommendation X.1303 in 2006. So it is accepted protocol for uh, dissemination purposes. So uh, CAP is all uh, through CAP uh, we can send any uh, information about any of hazards like uh, cyclones, Earthquakes, tsunami, landslides, and and other situations. The most geo-targeted uh, warning dissemination protocol, so through which we can select a particular area, and only in that particular area the alerts will go, it will not go as desired authorities. So we can drop the messages and we can uh, send it at desired uh, scheduling is possible through this care protocol. And we, as I told you, all uh, communication mediums, uh, we send the uh, alerts. We can send through TV, radio, uh, telecom networks, highway signages, home phone, internet, social media. It supports image, audio, and video messages. It's not only the SMS. We can send the audio and video messages through this cap, mainly designed for public, but uh, uh, it can be sent to other decision making authorities and first responders also. Most important is kept specially designed for our dissemination purposes. So it is very secure protocol. And uh, in countries like India, where digital languages, this uh, through CAP protocol, we can send uh, uh, alert dissemination in multiple languages, uh, in regional languages. Uh, through uh, COVID-19 southern platform, we have demonstrated this feature also. App is based on XML uh, protocol that is very user friendly and very secure. As I told you, it is based on the ITU standards X dot. So this is a working model of App protocol. Uh, we can send any warnings like flood warning, tsunami warning, earthquake, forest fire. Landslide, any order, order situation, 
health advisory research when warning warnings so alert dissemination agencies generates alerts in terms of warnings these alerts reach to the emergency operation centers they may be located in, at uh, central level ndma may be located at uh, state level in terms of state disaster management authorities and in, at uh, district of the levels also so the, at emergency operation center decision is taken whether to send these alerts or uh, not it need to be sent so based on the decision, uh, decision taken at coc these alerts reach to the uh, alerts are sent over different mediums uh, like uh, sms and cell broadcast or telecom networks radio tv internet mobile app facebook and twitter the alerts also reach to the first responders because uh, they are the first uh, uh, persons who will be dealing with the disasters the advantage of cap is simple and standardized format it is universally accepted for alert dissemination it is compatible with legacy network and emerging emerging transport methods also and through cap flexible geographic targeting is possible in terms of latitude and longitudes as i told you it is multilingual and multi we can send in regional language also phase and delay effective times and cancellations are possible through cap protocol message update and cancellation features are available so at uoc the authorities may update the message or they may cancel the dissemination and uh, we, can, we can send the digital image digital encryption and signature capabilities are available through cap protocol so uh, cap implementation us canada italy australia and germany they have officially adopted cap protocol to uh, uh, build country level integrated warning systems finland and so of implementing cap protocol in india uh, center of Develop development of is uh, technical arm of uh, department of telecom they have developed cap based cap based early warning platform it has been uh, for uh, three years now and based on this cap based early warning platform covid 19 customized version of cap based early warning platform now we will see the uh, covid 19 sadhan platform platform so uh, we all know the this uh, pandemic time this covid pandemic time the uh, requirement was felt by uh, authorities to send geo targeted alerts so multiple states about contaminant zones essential supply distribution points and e pass related information testing facilities available in that particular area create awareness about this covid pandemic quarantine center information so all the state governments they wanted to send targeted manner and for states it is very easy to send information in terms of pin code uh easily understand pin codes so by they need to enter the pin codes and in that pin code area the information will go automatically for me uh, we can send automatic dissemination from alert generating agencies and alert dissemination agencies there is no manual intervention only uh, alerts need to be generated and it automatically reaches through cap platform to the dissemination medium i told you multiple communication mediums are available we can send through tv radio and uh, telecom networks social media just like newspaper may not be effective communication but uh, we we can assume mobiles are always with us so that is more better way of more effective uh, communication approach we can send location specific alerts in the vernacular language only uh, selected areas will receive the sms others will not receive this uh, alerts and vernacular language is also possible this is standard protocol and universally accepted for uh, this alert dissemination that was the advantage of the covid-19 uh, platform so covid-19 platform is an integrated platform which is customized version of cap based early warning platform 
so only by uh, customizing this uh, uh, cap based platform it has been developed dot has uh, provided the facilitation to coordinate with service providers and cdot it is designed and developed by cdot which is a technical arm and through this covid anti southern platform central and state government authorities are able to send seamless uh, communication and able to integrate under one umbrella they can send any important information and advices related to to a targeted area through uh, pin codes or customized uh, this is the schematic gram of covid 19 platform so uh, let's say central and such as civil supplies health state disaster management authority logistics ndma central agencies they wanted to send specific area wise alerts based on pin codes and latitude longitudes so they generated alerts well uh, they, they and they will select the pin code or the area polygon then this uh, message messages will uh, moderation moderation so that is uh, uh, dot has 22 field units in almost all states and this messages will reach from this authorities go to dot field dot field units verify this messages before airing to the dissemination mediums then this cap uh, protocol cap messages uh warning warning platform and this cap warning warning platform disseminate to the uh, the telecom networks over all the tsps so uh, all the customer located in, in that particular pin codes or in that let long will receive the alert information generated by these agencies automatically through this cap uh, uh, to, to this platform so the location based warning uh, Uh, dissemination let selected by the authorities so uh, customers present will receive the alerts the this area will not receive the sms or alert so this is automated approach and it caters in numbers also suppose a subscriber roamed into this in in this area then he will automatically receive the alerts without uh, in, without uh, he need not install any app and uh, no subscription is required this possible we can uh, schedule the messages to uh, when to send it using covid-19 southern platform more than 300 crores sms have been disseminated in 26 states and uts so this is the volume of sms being held by uh, this platform this april 2020 and more than uh, through this platform 19 languages the information is related to essential item supply hot spot e pass related information printers information and test labs center information law and order any other law and order situation so targeted information is possible through this 19000 platform here are some of the uh, disseminated through this platform Uh, all languages are possible this is in kannada language this one is and hindi and english so we can send in multiple languages because it is very easy for the user to understand user prefer messages in regional languages so uh, that's all from my side i open to questions so uh, thank you very much sir for your presentation on this topic and uh, when emergency like covid 19 and disaster strike department of telecommunication has a strong and specific role to play in
keeping communities up to date with events and, adverti and advertising them on a practical step to take to reduce the impact of the disaster. The, uh, the CQAS offers more than many services, including automated emails, alerts for real time quarantine, geofence branches to the uh, authorities, and also uh, catering to the any mobile phone. And uh, the sir has rightly highlighted how DOT is assisting the state governments, local governments, and police from ground level enforcement of quarantine. So it can it can prove to be a like a, a solution to monitor the uh, movement, especially in the hotspot areas, without requiring physical presence of enforcement team in uh, in every nook and corner. So therefore, uh, effectively utilizing the human resource in the fight against this uh, COVID nineteen pandemic. So, uh, sir, uh, there are uh, one, two questions that uh, a, a participant has raised, sir. Sure. So, uh, yes, sir. So, one question is, sir, like, uh, sir, are there uh, some initiatives that are being, uh, that, uh, that new apps that are coming up so that uh, it, uh, they can have a mobile app from Google Play Store that are coming up from DOT side to, to spread the awareness or to spread the news of COVID-19? Uh, DOT is not directly developing apps, but uh, uh, it can support uh, agencies like uh, to uh, create awareness because uh, the state government authorities they are primarily uh, uh, responsible for creating awareness. But through our platform, they can send any alert dissemination, then they can create awareness. And sir, uh, one more sir, uh, one more question is from sir. This is from Radio Ala. And so the question is, sir, in in uh, usually in sir C areas or uh, in that area, sir, mobile signal it drops. So how they get messages? So they have like it's not exactly related to COVID, but they are saying that when they go uh, beyond the coastal areas into the deep sea, so mm -hmm. yeah, so the, the mobile signals it drops. So how they get messages? I don't know, sir, whether it is relevant to this topic, but it is not relevant uh, related to this topic. But yes, uh, they get information from satellite communication, not from this uh, this platform. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, and sir, uh, and last question, sir, that I would like to raise is, uh, sir, are there any new initiatives or new uh, things that are coming up from DOT that uh, we should have a watch on? Uh, it's from uh, it's from uh, Baski. So uh, new related, initiatives related to uh, this COVID nineteen pandemic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Related to COVID nineteen pandemic and or. Uh, uh, maybe sir, in early warning or any technological innovation that is coming up, sir, you can okay. highlight that also. Sir. Okay, so uh, I would like to brief the participants. Uh, DOT is in advanced stage of planning. Uh, Pen India, this uh, uh, cap alerting protocol, through which multiple agencies will be disseminated, uh, multiple agencies will be connected, like TV, radio, railway station, highway signage. And uh, all alert generating agencies like uh, IMD, CWC, GSI, Incois, SASE, they all will be integrated in one platform. So that is in process, that platform is in process for alert estimation. DOT has uh, taken initiatives like uh, COVID quarantine alert system, CQAS, during this pandemic time to uh, 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 to stop the this uh, a breach of quarantine breach, like all the, the, the customers who are kept in the quarantine, their location will be traced and uh, if and if they uh, break this, uh, their break this geofence, the authorities automatically get the alerts. So that is one thing. And uh, by bulk migrant migrant tracking system, that that I guess that was covered yesterday. That has been yes. taken initiative by DOT. Yes. And this COVID-19 major initiatives taken by you. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful presentation and highlighting our participants about the initiatives that were uh, taken by the Department of Telecommunication. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. Papa. Thank you all. Yes, sir. So now moving ahead with our second presentation, we have uh, Dr. Sandeep Borwa, scientist of Vigyan Prasad. He's uh, involved in the promotion of uh, amateur radio or ham radio for the last 33 years. He received his radio communication license in 1989, where he was a student of Assam uh, Agricultural University. He came out with a guidebook on amateur radio in 1992, 
which was widely used during those early days as amateur radio in India by the Novas. Sri Barua is able to draw nationwide attention from the young as well as all generations of him as uh, evident from the fact that he is being invited as guests in many of the renowned technical and educational agencies, institutes of the country as well as the other government stakeholders. Uh, he has been involved in emergency radio communication during many of the past large-scale disasters in India where amateur radio was extensively used for disaster communication to and from the disaster-affected areas like the Gujarat Bhuj earthquake 2001, Andaman and Nikawar uh, Island tsunami, Odisha super cyclone, Udisha disaster and Nepal earthquake. Uh, with these words, I would like to pass on the stage to Dr. Sandeep Borwa. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Am I visible and audible? Uh, yes, sir, you are visible and audible. Okay. Uh, good morning to all the participants. So, yeah, you already introduced me and I am in amateur radio uh, field for last 30 years. Uh, so, I got my amateur radio license in 1989. And uh, when, when we talk about uh, communication system in, in, in the event of any emergency situation, uh, we already have our uh, conventional modes of communication available. Uh, during earlier days, uh, these mo mobile phones were not there and only landline phones were there. So gradually the uh, smartphones have came up and uh, then the internet. Uh, so many technologies have come up actually. Uh, despite all these technologies, there are many people all over the world uh, who actually are very passionate about maintaining their own communication network. So. For example, of course, this my smartphone is my uh, personal device, and it has not been given to me by the government. Uh, it is my personal device, so it is up to me how much I invest uh, in purchasing a smartphone or a small mo mobile phone uh, for my utility. So it would again depend upon my affordability of the equipment. So I may be asking the price of that mobile phone. Uh, how much is the smartphone cost? So nowadays the cost of the smartphones, say for example, begins at around uh, uh, two to three k Indian rupees, uh, maybe to up to uh, 30, 40. But if you go for an Apple iPhone, it may be costing you even a small uh, ordinary smartphone would be costing you around 70, 80 thousand. So uh, it is not about the cost of the equipment. Uh, it is a, about the affordability of the technology the person wants to do according to the research he wants to get. Now, regarding this two-way communication system, this radio communication system, uh, this is entirely different actually. We, when we began uh, in this field of communication, uh, in the long past when radio commun communication started, people started building their own uh, equipments. So they started building their own radio communication equipments and um, their activity is actually uh, legalized uh, by the governments of different, different uh, countries uh, which are affiliated to the International Telecommunication Union, uh, the headquarters of which is located at Geneva. So uh, it is legalized as a personal two-way communication activity, two-way radio communication um, for private individuals who are not governmental people. They may be governmental people um, like me, or maybe non-governmental people, or anybody, citizens, uh, they can get their license, a radio communication license, after qualifying for uh, uh, qualifying for an for an exam. So one has to uh, appear for an exam. Uh, it is just like uh, you're getting a, a car driving license or a motorcycle driving license um, or anything which needs some skill. So the regulatory body who issues the license um, needs to ensure that the particular person whom they are allowing a particular device to be used uh, is uh, conversant with uh, that technology. How to use that technology? If he doesn't use the technology properly, so there can be misuse or, or there can be uh, there can be problem to other people. So you can see uh, a lot many gadgets here. Uh, these are all my uh, personal devices, actually. You, you can see um, this is a, 
VHF base station, very high frequency base station. Then this is this is for short distance communication. And apart from my uh, this smartphone, uh, I have this VHF base station uh, for two way communication uh, in and around Delhi, the NCT area. So uh, this VHF base station I can use for that. Uh, it's like a local area networking uh, through radio waves and it is like an alternative uh, community communication. Alternative communica uh, community communication. Suppose there is a very large scale um, catastrophic event like a big earthquake where the cell phone networks have gone down. In fact, sometime uh, in the event of an emergency situation, uh, many of the cell phone towers may be also be uh, affected and the networks may be clogged and during that time millions of people thousands of people uh, uh, come on the on their phones to know well-being of their relatives or friends so that time the mobile mobile phone networks gets clogged in that case our radio communication system this personal communication system uh, are uh, already free and we are very few people there may be many people there may be hundreds of radio amateurs or hams in Delhi, which are individual hobbyists, individual hobbyists with their personal communication license. So even if my smartphone doesn't work, I can try to give a call uh, in the event of an emergency to one of my friends. So that is the concept. But it is not that we have been operating our radio only for emergency. We have been operating our radio uh, for learning the different technologies. For example, we will experiment with different type of antennas. For example, you can see here an antenna which uh, which is a directional antenna. This is a directional antenna and with which we can find a particular person um, if he is transmitting a radio signal in which direction he is located. So we can pinpoint by beaming this antenna. So this is a directional antenna. It's called the Yagi antenna. Then uh, this is a HF high frequency long distance uh, communication set with which we can communicate all over the world. Actually, we can communicate to anywhere in the world uh, using this uh, transmitter and receiver in big HF transceiver. So this is for worldwide communication, worldwide or within the country. For example, I may be able to contact, say for uh, Hyderabad or Chennai. Mumbai, uh, Kolkata, Guwahati. So uh, those uh, those type of uh, uh, communication within the country is possible with this type of radio. And these radios are nowadays becoming sophisticated. Mm, like unlike earlier days, we didn't have the TFT touch screen. So you can see uh, this radio has a touch screen where you can actually uh, touch the frequency and uh, touch the button here and change the frequency. So you see, uh, I have tuned to this frequency. If someone calls me, I'll be able to hear it. If, if someone from a different place would be giving a call to me, uh, I will be able to hear him or hear her on this radio. And there are certain type of uh, equipment like this rotor, rotor this color rotor controller, with which we can make our antennas more efficient. For example, I showed you this antenna, which is a beam antenna, which is directional. Its signal goes only in one direction. Suppose I want to send my signal only to the south. I want to contact contact a station from south. Uh, I'll beam my antenna to south. So this rotor can beam my antenna um, to different direction. So if I want to contact Guwahati, I'll, I'll point to northeast. Um, then if I want to contact some South Indian station, I will beam my, uh, rotate my antenna uh, to south. So there are different technologies uh, we integrate and we keep backup of radios. So for example, if this radio may not be working for one or the other reasons, then I should have a backup, the contingency. So that's why I have another radio as a contingency, then another radio as a contingency and this power supply may go, go wrong. So I have another power supply. Uh, so these are the contingencies in an emergency preparedness situation. 
and regarding long distance communication we don't have to use very uh, big infrastructure for that uh, for example the antenna which i am using uh, on top of my house mm -hmm. uh, that is very simple and it is just a wire like this two wires uh, with a feed point uh, like this a feed point like this and it can be homemade actually it can be homemade at a very uh, cheap cost and these uh, small two wires can uh, help me connect to a very distant place maybe antarctica or maybe japan or anywhere in the world so this uh, emitter radio ham radio is not very complicated uh, by looking at, at these devices you may be thinking that it is too much uh, complicated or very sophisticated sophistication is of course there but uh, of course amateur radio is all about learning the different technologies uh, so we learn by doing on our own and that is the basic concept and philosophy of amateur radio that is why amateur radio operators the hobbyists uh, are recognized as uh, very reliable people uh, during emergencies and government uh, want uh, government wish to take their help uh, during an emergency situation so it is like uh, it is like an uh, alternative communication system when other communication system systems go down. For example, uh, the police have their own um, communication system, the military have their own communication system, uh, all other people have their own communication system. But why ham radio? Because you see, uh, ham radio people are from different backgrounds. They are from different uh, uh, different profession. Uh, some uh, some person may be a doctor, or someone may be uh, working in NIDM, for example, Dr. Sridhar Prakash sir, he also has a, has a valid amateur radio license. And similarly, uh, a police official may be a ham, or a military official may be a ham, or an NGO, some official from an NGO, he if he also possesses a radio communication kit and amateur radio license. So in that case, what happens? In case of police communication or military communication, there is no possibility of uh, interdepartmental communication. For example, if immediately in Delhi there is an emergency situation, uh, yeah, there is no provision that a police official can contact an army official on a specific radio frequency. If the mobile phone is not working, uh, he it is impossible for him from his house uh, to contact another official of, a, of another department, maybe fire department or electricity department. Uh, in that case, what happens? If uh, there are different people from different background, uh, maybe a college teacher or maybe a doctor or maybe a nurse, so if they are ham radio operator and licensed ham radio operator, uh, so they, they can communicate. They know that there is a particular frequency in which uh, they will be able to make a contact. For example, as I, as I said to you, uh, this radio, uh, I can immediately activate this radio if the, no communication system works in Delhi. We have our own network. So uh, my, if my mobile phone it doesn't work, uh, I can give, try to give a call to uh, one of my friends. A, a, anyone, I don't know who, who, who else is there on the radio, but I can try to make a contact. For example, I can try to give a call to someone on the radio. Uh, this is uh, NIDM demo frequency and SMS is management demo frequency for today. I'm Victor Inform uh, 2, Mike Inform Echo. Victor Inform 2, Mike Inform Echo for a demo. Any station frequency, please? Uh, we are to NA, this is we are to uh, operating uh, club station. We are to November for our hotel. Uh, very good morning, sir. Hi, how are you? Uh, VU2 and V, TCT over. Yeah, Roger. Zero TCT. Uh, this is Victor from 2, Mike from Echo returning. Uh, good morning to you, Monazi. Very nice that you replied back to my call. I am right now uh, giving a uh, demonstration uh, to uh, the participants of a webinar uh, of the National Institute of Digital Management going on online. Mm -hmm. So very nice that your audio is being actually straight to the internet. And I already shared the link probably if you can 
join that link you can um, see the video later also in youtube for me to be archived so nice of you that you replied back and i can show a two meter uh, our uh, delhi uh, local network uh, uh, system vhf network system 73 have a good day uh, vu2 uh, tct mm. this is vu2 my english from echo uh, go ahead what is my report Breaker. Yeah, breaker. Uh, breaker, please come in. This is Victor in from two Mike in from Echo. Uh, breaker is, I think, view to BQC. Victor in from two Bravo Keeper Charlie. This is a National Institute of Disaster Management demo net. Uh, net control is Victor in from two Mike in from Echo. Mm, good afternoon, uh, Sudar uh, Good copy, five and nine. Uh, very loud and clear copy. Uh, please go ahead, give my report, please. Very nice copy, Sudarshan. I can copy you direct also, uh, five and nine. So thanks a lot for this uh, NIDM demo help uh, today, uh, because uh, it is only half an hour slot I have. Um, I just wanted to show uh, on my after uh, while speaking uh, the two meter uh, communication system I wanted to demonstrate. Um, so uh, it is going live, probably being fed to YouTube also. I'm not sure and the audio you can hear so i don't uh, i won't uh, like to hold you thanks a lot uh, because i just wanted to show the efficacy uh, of, of our two meter vhf system my slot is only for 30 minutes so i have to carry on with my other things 73 have a good day and so nice of you for coming to the frequency take care it's so 73 to you also monazi please carry on uh, I will reduce the two-meter voice. Uh, I call it a day that I could contact you. Sudar Chaudhary and Manasi. Uh, view to BQC, uh, view to uh, TCT. This is view to any here. Offering the mic to uh, BQC uh, to continue with TCT. Uh, but I will be reducing the mic, so we will not be replying that again. 73 by 5. Uh, so, uh, so you can see, uh, even if uh, uh, my mobile phone uh, doesn't work, uh, I can establish communication uh, uh, far away. Uh, so, one station is at uh, Vikaspuri, then one station in, is at uh, ITO. So, we have network all over the Delhi. So, there is no problem in our case when uh, of communication and communication is the immediate thing that is required during an emergency system because without communication nothing is possible without communication nothing is possible for emergency management uh, then i told someone that uh, to check uh, long distance communication for example if i want to contact hyderabad i am not sure whether i'll be able to make a contact with hyderabad right at the moment but i can try uh, to give a call Mm, so we, we particularly use these type of radios for calling long distance stations. Hello, test. Yes. Hello. Hello. Ah, uh, Victor Uniformto Romeo Bravo India. Victor Uniformto Romeo Bravo India. This is Victor Uniform 2, Mike Uniform Echo from New Delhi. Victor Uniform number 2, Mike Uniform Echo. Victor Uniform 2, Mike Uniform Echo from New Delhi. I copy you, I copy you, radio meter like 4, 4 and 4. The noise level at my end is 9. Noise floor is very, very high. Uh, the noise strength is itself 9. Can you copy me? VO2. Romeo Bravo India at Hyderabad. This is Victor Uniform 2, Mike Uniform Echo. Hello, 
Your your signal is now better. Please come again, again. Please come again. Yeah, Roger. Kira sir, thank you. Thank you for five and seven signal report from Hyderabad. Uh, your report is five and five. Five and five. Uh, please say hello to the NIDM participants who are online listening to you. Over. From a returning, yeah, very fine business copy, YTG. Thank you for replying back to the call and uh, 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 telling about the importance of amateur radio, ham radio in emergency management. Uh, your audio is okay for me, but uh, it is uh, not very strong. Propagation is not very strong, but still, it is a good copy from Hyderabad. So, thanks a lot. I have only 10 minutes left uh, for my session. I appreciate your help very much, YTG. And hope to catch up with you many more times down the log uh, in better condition. So have a nice time. Stay safe. Take care. 73 and good day to you. Victor Uniform 2, Romeo Bravo, India. This is Victor at Hyderabad. This is Victor Uniform 2, Mike Uniform 2, now uh, clear on, from HF. 73 and bye. Thank you once again. So, uh, so you can see, uh, even if uh, long distance communication breaks down, uh, I am capable of communicating uh, from Delhi to Hyderabad or maybe other places of uh, India also if they come on the radio. Uh, so, uh, within a short time span, uh, we cannot expect many institutions to be there. Uh, so, I made a successful contact with uh, Hyderabad right now. The audio may be not actually be clear to you. Uh, because of the reason that uh, uh, these audios coming on the radio, uh, we are habituated to listening this type of uh, signals, audios, uh, when the, there is very heavy noise condition. And this noise condition is because of the ionospheric uh, propagation condition. These signals are not going through any satellite. These signals are going to an invisible layer, about uh, 50 to 90 kilometer. Uh, it is a charged layer, uh, charged by the sun, uh, sun's radiation and that ionospheric layer, we have no control over the charge, amount of the charge of that ionospheric, ionospheric layer. And there are many other factors like sun spot cycle. Sun spot cycle, those who know, the 11 year cycle when the sun spots uh, increase and the sun spots go down. So there are two type of cycles, solar maximum and solar minimum. So we have to depend on the sun spots to charge the ionosphere enough to reflect high frequency signals. If sun spots are not too much, they cannot charge uh, the ionosphere and they cannot reflect back the HF radio signals to different places. So that time our communication system goes down. So it is not that hand radio can do miracle in the event of an emergency situation, 
but still because of our wide spread um, uh, there are, we are wide spread all across the globe so if someone is receiving me if the other person is not receiving me he or she can relay that information uh, to the other station so that relaying system that is there so you can see uh, that is why one of the oldest organization authoritative body in amateur radio that is american radio relay league it was founded in 1914 and they named their organization as um, uh, american radio relay league Re relay so because during those days they they had to depend on relay very very much they have to depend on the relay system so one station would send signal to some other place the other st that station would relate to some other place like that so that way uh, we can relay messages uh, in a network so this is our long distance system i demonstrated mm, and uh, i'm not sure where i'm i still audible or not rather uh, uh, am i still audible yes, and my okay yes, sir, you are audible and okay because i have not yet given any powerpoint presentation only uh, seven minutes left uh, um, for my session uh, no, sir, sir. You, can, you can go on with your presentation sir no issues sir. you can take extra okay okay so uh, the, because practically i have demonstrated the two way system and uh, rajat thapati hello yes sir. Uh, actually i want to show you another very important technology which is digital communication technology when in a smartphone the text messaging and all these things yes sir yes sir please sir. you talked about uh, gsi use of the gsi for uh, location uh, plotting and tracking of people so yes, we sir. we amateur radio operators also have the same type of system um, and it can it can be used by any layman who, who has a license uh, uh, free of cost uh, using their radios hooked to the computer so yes, that is, I, I have an application actually on my computer that application can i run from here uh, yes sir you can i think you can run that uh, so yes, if sir. i run run then how to share it yes sir you can go to the share content page uh, sure. you have you are in your computer right sir yeah computer is on and my app is that software is running so beside that uh, your mute option there's a video option there is one share content option sir okay a video yeah share content yeah in this share exactly. content share content mm -hmm. i will share uh, yeah the app uh, app app, uh, app uh, this is, uh, i can see it yes I, I select this okay so is it visible yes, sir, it is visible sir so uh, this is an application called automatic packet reporting system aprs it is not only position recording it is text messaging and we can transfer file also between a doc file or a pdf file any file through this system it's called packet radio amateur radio packet radio so what happens you can see this is a map of delhi and this map is a scan map it is not a map which i have taken from the google it is a map which i have scanned from a book and by scanning scanning two pages uh, i uh, made a jpeg file and this jpeg file is calibrated uh, and if I mouse over somewhere uh, in this particular screen, I will get to know uh, the longitude latitude. For example, this is my house icon. It is showing the longitude latitude of my house. Then I can write some comment. Now, the now about this technology, this technology is 20 year old actually. And this software, this particular software, this is developed by a hand from UK, United Kingdom. You can see his name is roger barker g4 ide he has developed it, it in the year 2000 uh, but he died in 2004 but this software is still is being used by radio amateurs all over the world um, and this software is, is still operational even in windows 10 and he developed it when windows was at a very primitive stage in the windows operating system but he was so visionary in his coding skill so you can see the radio emitters are not only skilled in radio communication, mm -hmm. they are skilled in other technologies like in the field of computer uh, or coding or anything. So actually when you are getting introduced to amateur radio, um, you develop your skill in different fields of uh, uh, science. So it is very important for the development of a society in different ways. 
That's why Japan is progressing and Japan is the, has the highest number of radio amateurs in the world. Then followed by your USA, then Germany. So you can see the development index if you want to compare. Uh, you can judge from the number of hams that a particular country has. Japan has the highest number of hams followed by USA, the countries whom we call as developed countries. You will find that uh, it is not like that now they have increased. Their numbers were more even in the past. When there were no hams in India, uh, there were thousands of hams in USA long back in 1914. So it, it defines actually the mindset of a particular culture, how people want to become self-reliant in anything, not only radio communication, anything, not depending on the government. Yes, governmental dependence is of course there, but we cannot depend for everything on the government. We should always try to be self-reliant in all other fields of life. So that is uh, what another thing that ham radio teaches to the people. And that way, some people who are who may be in the electronics profession, who may be in the astronomy or any field of science, uh, GSI, uh, geographic information system. So they may develop some software for ham radio technology also to be integrated with the ham radio. Now you see this particular map uh, and this radio, you can see this radio, uh, this radio technology actually before coming of the Ola and Uber, we are very, uh, we know the application of the Ola and Uber, but the Ola and Uber came uh, very recently, but our this technology existed 20 years ago. So many people think that hand radio people are obsolete people, uh, purana zamana ka technology hai. <laughs> people talk like that, ask us to smartphone are here, but we can transmit even images. Mm, so people actually have never ventured into it. When a person never ventured what it is exactly, he will not know what it is. And without knowing, one cannot say that this is obsolete. Uh, obsolete uh, or obsolete nahi hai, ye bata nahi sakte, without going into it. So I am going to show you, suppose in this particular map, uh, I have programmed my this radio, uh, to transmit my position, but you see, uh, to transmit my position, I have to be outside my house because my radio has a GPS and it has to take the signal from the uh, GPS system uh, run by the US Department of Defense, US DOD, um, the navigation of satellites. If three set signals from three satellites are uh, received by uh, this radio, because only US DOD signal can also uh, only be received by the public. So that's a good thing they have done that ma making navigation so easy uh, using Google map nowadays. But we also use the same technology with, using the GPS technology. Now, as I am inside my house, my radio will, will not receive the GPS signal from a satellite. So I manually fade an arbitrary location to my radio. So if I send a press button here, you can, you can, you can see the map here is Delhi, but I have fed a location of Hyderabad. Hyderabad location. So if I press my button here uh, to tell someone that I am at Hyderabad, I can press it and there may be some terrestrial digital repeaters through which the signal will go to one station, then that station will automatically relay. Those are all uh, microcontroller devices which can connected to small radios, which can relay one uh, information can be reaching to the other part of India um, through those relay system. But unfortunately, we don't have a dedicated network for that. But this is, I am locally doing it, uh, sending this signal to another radio, uh, uh, this radio, this radio, and this radio connected to my, this USB port. And this is the software, you can see. Uh, so, uh, I, I now press a button here. Uh, you can see that if I press the button, I just keep the volume a little up. You can hear a sound, it's a, it's a packet sound. Uh, our ears cannot decode it, but the computer can decode it. You can see the map got changed here. Uh, Rajaji, you, can you see the map changed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so you can see I fed my location uh, as one call sign you can see. So you, you saw when I was communicating with the people, I was using a particular identification Later, for example, my call sign is uh, VU2 MUE. VU2 MUE. So all Indian stations are VU2. So 
So for for example, if you go uh, to this map, uh, to this map, uh, this is the international amateur radio world map. So from the prefix, you can see V, V, V U. This is India. Then uh, you can see the other countries. For example, 4S. 4S is Sri Lanka. Then V U7. V U7 is Lakshadweep. Then 9M. 9M is Malaysia. HS is Thailand. Uh, so all countries have their own prefixes. So from this prefix, uh, after listening to a station, the prefix of the station, uh, we come to know from which part of the world uh, that particular uh, station is operating. So you see uh, this call sign uh, VU2MAE-8. This is the secondary station identification. My home station is VU2MAE and this is the secondary station. Uh, my mobile station. For example, I am displaying a, a motorcycle icon, and here you can see um, it is showing the distance. It is showing the distance 1,234.7 kilometer. A comment is written off duty. That is, I am not on duty. Um, speed is zero kilometer because I am not moving. I am static here. Um, then height is zero. Then course. Course means from in which direction I am moving. So, and bearing, bearing is your uh, 174 degree. Bearing means from New Delhi to Hyderabad or from Hyderabad to New Delhi. That, uh, that in which angle, if I have to use a beam antenna to this station, in which direction I have to beam. So, all these information are automatically plotted on the map. And in, you can see one minute ago, if uh, someone want to know when I reported last time, um, it may be 10 minutes ago, it may be 30 minutes ago. So it is all automatic and I can send a message to this particular person also, send message. So I will just click here. Yeah, so now I typed a message on my computer and that message without cell phone network from this radio uh, will come to this radio. You can see the message. I, I just click the enter button here. Then you can hear, see this message here. So, so you can see, uh, and there is an acknowledgement also that the message is received, and there is an auto reply also. Hi, I am driving now. So all this type of technology we had long back uh, uh, twenty years ago, not now. Ula uh, Uber is now coming for our utility purpose, but we hams have been using this type of technology for last twenty years. Uh, this digital communication technology, text messaging, position plotting on the map. Uh, so, so many things we can do actually using ham radio. Uh, so, uh, it's a very good uh, means uh, initiative that NIDM is taking. And uh, recently, during a training program organized by NIDM, recently means few months back, uh, many people appeared for their licensing exam, and uh, they are from different backgrounds like NDRF, BSF, doctors, engineers, uh, and IS officials, including um, NIDM officials. So they received their amateur radio licensing exam. The exam uh, exam details here is in the NIDM page. Uh, so Raju Thapaji would be able to give you the study material. Uh, it is there in the NIDM website link. Um, so you can go through that particular document and uh, you can uh, appear for the licensing exam uh, conducted by the Ministry of Communications. It is just a 100 marks exam. Uh, there are two portions of the exam, 50 marks is related to basic radio and electronics and 50 marks radio related to radio rules and regulation. Radio rules and regulation means we need to know uh, certain uh, certain rules and regulation. For example, uh, what type of message I can transmit on amateur radio, ham radio. And so, for example, I cannot transmit music. Amateur radio is not uh, allowed uh, to transmit music or some recreational program. I cannot read the news or I cannot discuss some pol uh, political matter. I, ca I cannot do business through, through amateur radio. And I cannot do official type of job, official type of communication uh, through amateur radio. Because this technology is, uh, this uh, particular amateur radio is for uh, learning the technology, uh, not for using for uh, some uh, profit for mo monetary purpose. So all the, the, those things, you have to go through the rules and regulation 
devised by the Ministry of Communications. And that is in the NIDM link I have seen. Uh, I think Raju Thapas would be able to share that link. Uh, you have that link, no? Yes, sir, I, have, I will share that. Yeah, you can share that link so they will be able to get to know uh, all the details for how to go for a license. Mm. Yeah, time is 12 minutes, so I, I leave the floor to uh, the question and answer session. I have not gone through any PowerPoint. I hope it is okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so, do you want us to play the video that uh, was shared, or uh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that uh, uh, share. Uh, shall I switch it off from here, or the chair share this thing? Mm, sorry. Yes, sir. You can share from the your end also, or you want us to share? You, we can share from our end. Also. Uh, I don't exactly see the screen where it is. Uh, stop sharing. Okay, okay sir. Okay. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, should I share it from my side, sir? Uh, which one? Uh, you want me to share the video, sir? You will share the video. Oh, you want to share the video? Okay. okay. So, you play the video. So, uh, we are going to show you a video exactly in uh, emergency situation uh, where we can use satellite also for communication. Low Earth orbit satellite. We have so many satellites. Even at, on International Space Station (ISS), there is a dedicated uh, relay station. When International Space Station which is orbiting at a height of about 400 kilometer. If it comes over Delhi, uh, we can utilize that uh, relay station uh, to transmit. And it, it will cover a huge footprint of about two to 3,000 kilometer for uh, emergency communication. Okay, from Baru, uh, uh, someone is saying very good. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, we can uh, communicate through low Earth orbit satellites. There are some low Earth orbit emitter radio satellites, which we can utilize. I'm going, uh, Raju Thapazi is going to play that video for you. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, so shall we go to this? So you, you, you want to say something or sir? So shall we move to the uh, question answer session, sir? Yeah, question answer session you can go. Okay, okay. Uh, so for, first of all, very much thank you, sir, for this wonderful presentation. And Thank so you. you have rightly highlighted that the ham radio has always been the forefront whenever uh, like a disaster strike, be it the flood, cyclone, earthquake, or whatever kind of natural or man-made situations. With the capacity of uh, modern equipment to operate from low batteries, low batteries, and also the uh, reliance on the main power is not there. And so ham are ideally equipped to work out in the field where uh, basic amenities do not exist. Uh, Indian hams uh, have always relied around in every possible emergencies and uh, their effort has always been lauded. And uh, sir, uh, there are a few questions sir, that I would like to take. Yes. So first one is sir, uh, from uh, Nikhil. Okay. Uh, his question is, sir, I have applied for the license about three months ago, but still uh, not receive any license. So where can I get update regarding this? Or is there any way to track the license status? Okay, uh, uh, he can contact uh, Wireless uh, Planning Commission, uh, uh, sorry, uh, WPC as well, Wireless Planning and Coordination Wing, an Assistant Wireless Advisor. So uh, if he sends me a personal message, I'll give the email ID of uh, the Assistant Wireless Advisor. He can contact him and he will get to know the status of his license. Okay, sir. Uh, and the next question is sir, from uh, Onkar Puri, Advisor Disaster Management. Uh, question is, uh, how does ham radio or uh, community radio help remote rural or semi-urban areas of Indian district for fast communication where telecommunication is poor or has uh, limited access? Although... Okay. okay, can you repeat the question again? Sir, uh, the question is, how does uh, like ham radio or uh, community radio help remote or rural semi-urban areas of Indian district for fast communication? when telecommunication is sometimes poor or limited access no that is what i have already demonstrated so the yes, person okay. uh, person where the, the people are they need to be trained themselves or someone has to train them uh, to get the license and if they have the equipment uh, now the equipment cost is very cheap this type of equipment handheld equipment so for local area networking suppose in a hilly area there is sometimes landslide or maybe flood somewhere so these type of radios, after getting the license, can be a, a very easily purchased. And uh, in ham frequencies, uh, need, these radios need to be programmed, of course, not in other frequencies. 
and uh, one can immediately uh, contact each other during emergency situation so you don't it is not like that government will do it for you it is uh, it is your own effort that is needed and for that of course government can guide you the local register management agencies uh, properly need to guide the people locally to get the license and get the radios so that way when the other telecommunication network goes down so they would definitely be able to make a reliable contact using this type of radio and uh, one more question is sir uh, uh, like uh, same uh, from onkar puri only like uh, uh, she said that she have two radio sets of a uh, short frequency so can she operate both of them without license or uh, for that also they need permission to do that sir? no i don't know what radio equipment uh, she has uh, and uh, there is only one uh, frequency is free in india without license that is your uh, 446 pmr uh, that is 446 megahertz pmr frequency and only equipment allowed to be sold by ministry of communications a person can purchase without any license but that radio has a very limited very low power of 500 milliwatt and can cannot communicate to far away distances it is a very short distance equipment that is called pmr 446 a personal mobile radio 446 that is d licensed free license means one can buy that equipment but that equipment has to be uh, certified by ministry of communications and only uh, those equipment can be purchased. Otherwise, if it is a spurious equipment from China or somewhere, it is illegal. I'm not sure about what type of equipment she is using. OK, sir. And uh, one more question is from Sir Sardar Ramiz. Uh, yes, sir, he has been uh, like uh, actively taking part in conversation. So again, he has raised this question, sir. Like, uh, mm -hmm. they want to start a community radio in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. So mm -hmm. please tell us, how can we have community radio started in Jammu and Kashmir? Guide about it in procedures, sir, like, uh, or ham radio or community radio, if they want to set up, what is the procedure, sir? They want to know the procedure for that. Uh, no, community radio and ham radio or amateur radio is totally different. Community radio is a broadcast system where uh, a particular community or university or college, they can set up a radio station of their own and government has certain provisions for that also like the how much power they can use the height of the antenna and it should not be go beyond the uh, certain distance the signal should be localized so our ministry of communications doesn't uh, give the license it is initially ministry of information and broadcasting they need to contact ministry of information and broadcasting is the regulatory body for community radio licensing uh surya prakash sir would be able to give more detailed information about that uh, because i am not uh, i don't know the details about the community broadcast licensing uh, and so there are many questions about uh, how to get the license for that participant uh, we will i will share all the details uh, yes, how you, to you, apply yes sir how yeah, to yes, apply sir. for the license where to apply what is the fee sir has shared a document for that so i will be sharing that uh, pdf content where you can find all the details and detailed information about how to approach where to uh, get that information so i think that will clear most of the queries uh, in the chat box that i can see Mm, answer uh, yeah yes sir uh, that was the i think uh, that was the last question sir. thank you very okay. much sir thank you very okay, much thank sir, you. for joining us thank and, you uh, thank you making thank time you. from your busy schedule sir. thank you very thank much thank you thank you so much Tabaji. thank you so uh, this, but yeah yes yes sir yeah i'll disconnect or yes sir you can you can sir you can you can disconnect sir. okay i'll be there uh, i will okay. thank you sir Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, with that, uh, we have come to the end of the technical session. So, uh, uh, Professor Surya Prakash will be talking in the value detection session. But uh, before we go to that, uh, I will just give quite uh, give you a very brief recapitulation of what we have uh, done so far in the, these three days of training program. So, on the first day of the training program in the inaugural session, Professor Surya Prakash, head GMR division NIDM, he chair he uh, who is the chair of this program also he set the context of this training program where he highlighted uh, rightly underlined the uh, need of the for need to focus on promotion of efficient safe and resilient communication environment for emergencies and disease, disaster situation and he also highlighted that coordination and cooperation among stockholders is also very crucial uh, and along with better linkages uh, among them 
also um, he he also highlighted that media for exchange of ideas information knowledge and experience on disaster risk uh, management and to build a better culture of proactive rather than reactive reporting culture is also um, the need of the hour then uh, Sri, uh, we were also joined by Sri Chandra Sekharji, uh, DDG DM, Department of Telecommunication, who highlighted that information and communication technologies play a very significant role in uh, disaster uh, prevention, mitigation, response, and recovery. And in the technical session, um, Sri SS Jain, sir, uh, Director DM de de from DOT, gave a detailed presen uh, presentation of the standard operating procedure for telecommunication services for responding to disaster, where um, he highlighted the mission to minimize the impact of disaster on life, property, environment, and uh, economy through prompt provisioning and restoration of telecommunication services. And a vital role in undertaking rest and rehabilitation measures. And the role of the Department of Telecommunication is to act as a lead or primary agency for uh, emergency support function related to the provision of uh, telecommunication services by the other. Uh, in the same day, Dr. Haji and Professional Postal Disaster Risk Reduction and Resilience Center in GMR Division and IGM. She talked about the uh, uh, Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction and the new urban agenda and the Prime Minister Ten Point agenda. She highlighted that we need to, um, there is a need for uh, for this all this international agreement uh, to not see in isolation but as a one. And uh, the need for the effective early warning system and its dissemination and also various uh, systematic operating procedure in disaster management was uh, presented by myself um, during my lecture. And uh, coming to the second day, No. Uh, the first lecture was, uh, was presented by Sri uh, Hadi IDM, where he discussed the role of social media in various aspects of uh, emergency awareness and preparedness to connect, discuss, and share knowledge in a specific field. Inappropriate communication and dissemination of uh, warning usually results in inappropriate response. He also talk, talked about the fake news in disaster situation and highlighted various ways to combat fake news. And uh, Sri Rajiv Kumar Suklaji, former uh, ADG and a senior resort, a senior media person, talk emergency response. Uh, and where highlighted the role of radio in disaster management. And while highlighting the crucial role of media in disaster risk prevention, forewarning uh, coverage, he mentioned the importance of radio during a disaster. He also highlighted that where no newspaper can go, community radio can go. Disaster handling authorities need to be better acquainted with the work of not just radio broadcasting, but also the dynamic and compulsion of different radios broadcasting organization in the country, and more importantly, those uh, active in their respective areas. And uh, the last presentation of uh, 5th November was made by Sri Atul Sinha, DDG, uh, admin from Department of Telecommunication, where he talked about the application of big data analytics in telecommunication domain and its application in disaster management, where he showed a case study on uh, COVID-19 pandemic and also the migrant and the migrant laborers. And uh, today, on the third day, um, well, our first presentation was made by uh, Sri Asraful Sarji, where uh, where he highlighted when emergencies like COVID-19 and disaster strike. The DOT has a very strong and specific role to play in keeping communities up to date uh, and uh, with events and, advertise and, ad and uh, advising them on practical steps to take uh, to reduce the impact of a disaster. He also talked about the CQAS uh, uh, app offered many services, including automated email alerts for real-time quarantine, geofencing breaches to the authorities and catering to any mobile services. So uh, during this, um, and just now, uh, our, our previous uh, speaker, Mr. Dr. Sandeep sir, also highlighted the, uh, gave a very practical demonstration about the uh, ham radio, and uh, with uh, with the real time uh, contacting with the different ham radios, yes, say uh, the ham operators. So during this three day training program, there has been some key takeaways points 
like uh, initiative must be taken to create a network of amateur radio in India to strengthen the community-based uh, disaster preparedness by reaching to the people and saving life from natural disaster. And also it was highlighted that broadcasting techniques and system for use in emergency communication need to be continuously, in, you know, like it should be improvised. And there was also suggestion from uh, uh, participant also that we took like the NIDM need to focus in sharing our knowledge and information in uh, local languages also to reach to the community residing in uh, remote areas where limited understanding of um, English is uh, English language is, uh, uh, is there. So um, we need to collaborate and also coordinate uh, between broadcasting organizations in emergency situation that needs to be strengthened. That was very uh, nicely highlighted by uh, our uh, Rajiv Kumar Sukla ji sir yesterday. So local innovation needs to be harnessed and integrated with uh, new technologies whenever possible while strengthening early warning and community system uh, was also um, underlined by Professor Surya Prakash in the inaugural session. And uh, educating society regarding rumor controls during disaster uh, response is very crucial. There is a need to train and promote society to follow government organization, officials and credible source of information to get factual updates about what is happening in disaster situation. So overall, this training program was quite successful in delivering messages with over 1000 participations via Cisco WebEx and YouTube platform. Uh, uh, in the end, I will uh, not exactly end, I will request uh, Professor Surya Prakash, who is the head of uh, GMR division NIDM and also the chair of this training program to say a few words in the concluding uh, session. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Raju. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible and visible. Okay. Uh, let me first thank all our speakers and experts who have shared their rich knowledge which is very much valuable in saving lives. Our experts have give, uh, given us the means to save lives and uh, communication, how we can become redundant, reliable, accurate, precise, and also in times of uh, failures, how we can use alternative technologies. So these are very good things. And we are always looking for easy to use, economical, accessible, and practically usable technologies as you said improvising improvising on our technologies at the national level and in the, within the states also and uh, then uh, what we are looking for is uh, some of the suggestions coming and also now being implemented also is some uh, kind of universal communication devices because we have multiple uh, types of devices and multiple frequencies being used in our systems, we have to have a system which can actually handle all types of frequencies and all types of equipment. Nowadays, communication, universal communication devices are available, which are being used by our disaster and emergency organization institutions. So we can use that. And in addition to that, uh, uh, we have to actually follow now common alert protocol, which is being used at global level universally. So we have to follow that. But, and I have a suggestion that along with that common alert protocol, we must also integrate our GIS, GPS, and remote sensing techniques so that people will actually get the exact place and also the exact distribution of the disaster consequences and also an imagery to oversee at the local level. Raju, am I uh, audible? Yes, sir. You are Hello. audible and visible, sir. Okay, okay. Something uh, I think is not uh, going correctly. Okay. So now, next thing that uh, when uh, uh, there was a presentation on uh, use of mobile technologies and social media, a suggestion had come up for one-stop app. We will try to work out with the concerned nodal agencies and those who have developed these apps to bring them together on one platform. And uh, we will also request those who are listening to us, whether experts or delegates, if they can help us in undertaking this task. Another important thing that we have to focus on and we are trying to work with is media network on disaster management. Because media plays an important role in uh, uh, sharing uh, information with the public and communicating with the public. So we have to, we didn't have any professional education 
with the journalist reporters and photographers from the media uh, to undertake activities related to disaster management by virtue of their occupation and uh, deputation on those duties they are learning and doing it so we have to actually develop now this field with the media and mass communication as well and train them and educate them how to cover disaster situations and how to help public in pre during and post disaster situations we have different social platforms as my colleague anil katata has shared with you whether it is twitter facebook instagram or whatsapp or whatever telegram may, may be there or facebook but we have to actually develop a social platform for our drr friends as well those who are interested in reducing risk and making our community is resilient also have to have a good uh, platform where they can exchange this kind of knowledge information ideas and innovation so we'll try to work on it although we have small uh, networks but uh, we have to have a bigger larger networks where we are working now then uh, we have to not uh, set aside our traditional knowledge wisdom and resources as well as the skills so we have to continue and integrate that and continue with that also and also currently we are using uh, crowd sourcing technologies no using machine learning and artificial intelligence as well and a, a very good demonstration of big data analytics demonstrated by our expert from dot so we, we will continue to work on it and develop it further so that we can help our masses at large in disaster situations then uh, somebody had raised this question to uh, communicate in vernacular languages now new applications have developed you can see uh, in one of our uh, webinars we have demonstrated this that uh, if you have a google and you don't uh, are not able to identify even the language test just put on google translator it will identify not only the language but also translate it late it into the language that you can understand so those uh, options are available now softwares and apps are also coming up which can help you select your language and then get the message in voice mode also into the language that you can understand so those kind of applications have already been developed and have now to become more popular and in public platforms then uh, the other parameter which has actually brought uh, to our notice is failure of power supply for communication systems to function so we are working with that also that how we can uh, no assure public uh, power supplies to our communication devices so that they remain functional maybe we will use non conventional power technologies like the solar system the wind systems which may remain functional despite uh, the failure of our power distribution systems then uh, one more thing i would like to share with you the somebody talked uh, in the question and answer pl platform about the fisherman getting the information i remember in oki cyclone there were many casualties of the fisherman who could not receive the information our isro has bugged on it and we have got now a system called navic which has been shared with the fisherman which they can carry in along with their boats and they will get all the information it is more accurate than the normal gps also and uh, has uh, been actually working on the basis of seven uh, satellites three of them are uh, geostationary and four of them are geosynchronous in nature i think one more uh, satellite has also been added to this orbit now so this system has also been built up now there was another question which was posed to uh, mr sandeep uh, about uh, the ham operations and the ham radio in uh, jammu and kashmir i am happy to inform you that when nidm conducted this training with support from uh, sandeep ji also uh, we had conducted uh, got the test conducted through the wpc and uh, we got many licenses and one of the lessons the first lessons on ham radio went to the director disaster management mr amir ali from uh, kashmir 
Srinagar. And uh, he learnt a lot. He got the lessons, and he conducted the training in Kash uh, Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir, for developing further ham uh, operators. So th that's all. This uh, th these kind of uh, trainings are actually leading to uh, more uh, trainers and more uh, trainees in the uh, states who are attending NIDM training programs. Community radios, we are also again promoting. And Information and Broadcast Ministry is uh, looking into this. Both ham and community radios are very less in our country compared to other countries. We have to uh, actually work a lot on this direction. And it is not possible without contributions from our stakeholders, particularly those who are listening to such programs and uh, attending such programs. They should take actually initiatives and build on it. So th every step takes time. So we have to move ahead. And as Vivekananji said, arise awake and stop not till the goal is achieved. Our goal is disaster risk reduction and resilience. So all of us has to actually join hands and work towards disaster risk reduction and resilience. We are very happy that we are joined with the very good, reputed, experienced uh, experts who are sharing their knowledge so kindly try to make use of it you can listen to all such lectures but until and unless you apply it you will not get get benefited so listening to lectures is one side but applying the knowledge to the practical ends is more important so kindly do this and help us achieve our goal. And with these words, I would say that uh, we will be able to achieve uh, whatever resources we have, a success in our efforts with contributions from all the stakeholders. Uh, that's why we talk about inclusive approach. We talk about ecosystem-based approach, and we say, non-exclusive in disaster management. So at the end, I would say that the steps are the ones who get to the steps of the steps. It doesn't happen with the steps of the steps. It doesn't happen with the steps of So let's join hands together, build our strengths, and bring disaster risk reduction and resilience in the country. With these words, thank you very much, Raju, for giving me this opportunity to give this concluding address. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, precisely uh, highlighting so many important points in such a short time. Uh, with that, uh, dear participants, uh, we have come to the end of this uh, today's session and also the, um, this three-day session. So in the end of this uh, three-day, wonderful three-day training session, uh, on behalf of NIDM and Department of Telecommunication, I would like to propose a vote of thanks to the Honorable distinguished speakers, Sri Sri Fal Maina, ADG Director, uh, dis, sorry, Disaster Management from uh, DOT, Dr. Sandeep Borowa, Scientist Dev uh, Vigyan Prasad, Sri Atul Sina, uh, DDG Admin from uh, Department of Telecommunication, Sri Rajiv Kumar Suklaji, uh, Senior Media Person who is still there from the uh, uh, starting of this today's session to the end and uh, also Sri S.S. Jain sir, Director DMDOT for joining us in this three-day tra training program and highlighting our participants uh, with, and enlightening them with their vast knowledge and experience. Also, I would like to extend a special thanks to the Executive Director of uh, NIDM, Major General Manoj Kumar Bindal, uh, who couldn't join us uh, uh, in this training program because of his other uh, urgent as a engagement but uh, he also for thank him for providing innovative and encouraging en environment and giving us the moral guidance and continuous enthusiasm and also a valuable suggestion throughout nidm endeavors i would like also like to thank uh, sri chandra sekarji uh, ddg dm from uh, dot for his support in organizing this uh, training program and i must uh, also thankful uh, 
express my thankful to Sri Sri Pal Minaji ADG and Sri SS Jain, director from D, uh, from DOT, for their support and coordination in organizing this training program. First, and I also heartily congratulate uh, all the participants for their active participation in this uh, event. I hope everyone has some key takeaways from this training program, which they would like to share and talk in their families, relatives, and colleagues. As no program can become successful with a single person, so I extend my very big thanks to our GMRD team, Mr. Anil Kathet, facilitator, and also Dr. Harjit Kaur, who is the host of today's program, uh, and our IT team, Sovit, Balaji, Gora, for making this training program a very successful um, event with their contribution. So with these words, uh, we have come, uh, I would like to end this training program, uh, but uh, uh, I, will ha I have some important announcement for the participants. Uh, the feedback link for the three-day training program is, uh, is shared in the chat box. You can go and fill up the chat box, uh, check and fill up the form. And uh, in case if you miss the feedback form, please do not worry, we will send the feedback link uh, later on through your email or through WhatsApp. And also, your uh, you don't have to worry about your attendance. Kindly note that uh, Cisco WebEx event automatically it will record your attendance sheet, so you don't have to worry about worry about the your attendance sheet. So uh, and uh, uh, minimum of uh, eighty percent attendance is required for certification. I hope uh, this training program was. Uh, so was some importance to you. With these words, uh, I would like to end this um, training program. Stay safe, stay healthy. Jai Hind. Thank you, everybody, for joining us.